If Ghana was to hold a referendum 10 years from now on whether to legalize homosexuality or not, what would your stance be? Do you agree with the president, His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuado, when he surmised in an interview with Jane Dutton on Talk to Al Jazeera that legalization of homosexuality is bound to happen in Ghana in the near future with the emergence of sufficiently strong coalition to push for a change in the law? To discuss this issue and the closure of the Blue Pay Up Pay Bridges I have with me again, Honorable Reverend John Intim for a member of Parliament for Asensad constituency, who is also an advocate against the legalization of homosexuality in Ghana, and Honorable Thomas Nyako Ampem, member of Parliament for Esujaman constituency, and you are watching The Hard Truth. My name is Dana Akusia Kunidua Sante Samuels. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the hard truth, truth and I have um, some very tough gentlemen in our studio. I have with me Honorable Thomas uh, Nyakwampim, MP for Esujaman constituency and our regular guest, Honorable Reverend John Intim Fodjoa, um, MP for Asin South, am I right? Constituency, welcome gentlemen to the hard truth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are you okay, sir? Yeah, <laughs> No, I won't bite right. you. No. I promise I won't bite you. Look well. Thank you so much for, for, for coming. Good. I'm sure, um, our president, Anadu Dankwa Kufado, uh, feels that um, the law, um, or the current law on homosexuality in Ghana, is bound uh, to, to change on strong advocacy. And uh, he got a lot of uh, backlash uh, from civil society groups, uh, from the imams, and all of that. We also have um, we seen some government communicators, uh, you know, trying to explain to, to the president's actual saying. In, in your in your view, what do you make of what the president said? In my view, I think that uh, let me first say good evening to everybody mm -hmm. uh, watching us this evening, especially the good people of Esu uh, mm -hmm. The the news mm -hmm. about the president's interview and his responses uh, came as a shock to every Ghanaian, majority of Ghanaians, I should say, uh, because if the president thinks that with strong advocacy, Ghana will yield to changing our laws to accommodate that gays and lesbians mm -hmm. uh, in this country, then uh, I believe the president doesn't really know Ghanaians, because uh, it is something that I believe that unanimously a lot of Ghanaians are against. I have heard a lot of people trying to justify and to say that the president didn't really mean that for me. Exactly. Did he really mean to I say mean, that we are going, going said, to get there? If you listen to what he said, I mean, enlightening it to social change that happened in the UK when he was there and all that, and that if there is strong advocacy, uh, strong pressure, uh, it is so bound you, you to happen. the president is waiting for that strong pressure yes. and then you know, yes. he just got over And it. the worrying part is that uh, he seems to be inviting the people to make strong efforts mm. for, for that to, to, mm. to come. And that is the most unfortunate aspect. But, but, but uh, some might say that, you know, we, may not be, we shouldn't be too worried about uh, uh, what he said. And uh, he didn't really mean we pray that. So. We didn't really we pray mean so. that. And I think it will help all of us if the president himself comes out and say that this is not what I meant. Mm. I am against homosexuality, and all that. That will be more emphatic than the president speaking and other uh, appointees of the president coming to dilute it and mm. to say that he didn't mean that. And we are all hoping. Uh, that, he that meant something what, else. Exactly. He meant some. But, that but, is what we, we but under for. what condition again, Ampem? Under what condition uh, do you see homosexuality thriving in Ghana? Under condition of uh, people mounting pressure on people like the president and, and others, we have seen that happen. We have seen stronger people, nations trying to tie uh, aid and other things to you not respecting human rights because you are not legalizing lesbians and But, but uh, should that be the case? The so we see people mounting stages and uh, campaigning or even talking about it on various platforms. Should that be a good reason enough for government to say that, okay, the people are talking... Not at them. all. Not at all. That is why we see the response of the president as a very dangerous thing for mm. our country. Mm. Because we have our culture, we have our norms. 
we have our beliefs. And, and it is against it. Mm. And look, every president who was confronted with this was emphatic. President Kufo was emphatic about his stance and what Ghana stands for. President Mill same, President Mahama same. What did we see with uh, President Ekufuado? Mm. I mean, dancing around it and giving hope to the people fighting for, for, for this. That it's right? possible, it's bound to happen. But, 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 but uh, in team, you have been advocating against, uh, you know, legalization of, of uh, LBGT. And um, when you heard what your president or our president said, uh, did you feel betrayed? Thank you once again for the opportunity to be here. And permit me to convey my greetings to our esteemed audience of the hard truth across Ghana and the world over, particularly those doing the viewing from Masin's hard constituency. And to state that, let me even begin with what the Word of God says. Mm. In Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22 and 23, mm -hmm. and I read, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither thou neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. And on this note, to even give very good greetings to my co-panelist, Honorable Ampim, a very good friend of mine and a very fine legislator in Parliament at that. It is important to point out that the words of President Akufuado are, are being misrepresented. And it is important to put it in, in perspective. The question, if you even watch the video um, carefully, and you, 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 you can watch it over and over again, the question did not even seek to elicit the personal position of the president. And he went on to comment on how the, the narrative of homosexuality had evolved in some other jurisdictions, specifically in England. That does not suggest that the president is for homosexuality. That does not suggest that the president is setting an agenda for advocacy groups to spring up what in was Ghana. He trying to say that then? does not mean that President Akufuado is stands for homosexual, homosexuality. He said, I have been, I have been the lead advocate. He said it's bound, I mean it's English, he said it's bound to happen. So uh, if, if there are mount or pressure groups mounting up, a lot of them springing up, then maybe the pressure will be I, on the public or the government I have been a lead to advocate. legalize it. I have been a lead advocate of homo, anti-homosexuality and strongly resisting any pressure to legitimize homosexuality and lesbianism in Ghana in Parliament. I launched this campaign on 23rd of August 2017 and prior to that we, have, we, have, we had received comments from the Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honourable Speaker, Reverend Professor Mike Okwe, stating clearly that Ghana is not ready to yield to the precious mm. mountain from all sides, the international organisations, international community to le legitimise homosexuality, uh, lesbianism and bestiality. But let me give you some antecedents which have, if we are to recount, how various presidents had responded to the confrontation or the mm -hmm. pressures of homosexuality. You recall, the, the, in, in the year 2006, mm -hmm. there was some anticipated conference of, of homosexuals mm -hmm. that was scheduled to take place in 2007. And quickly, President Kufo intervened to stop, to cancel that conference. You know, the MPP's ideals and philosophies, as we all know and familiar with. We are a conservative party, and as a conservative party, our principles are anchored on such, what on such the customs president? that are what completely incongruent with homosexuality. What stopped him from being emphatic and this saying that, no, MPP and now, exactly, now, what, what now, stopped the now, president now, from now, saying that, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, now, Ghana is not going to embrace now, that, I'm, I'm, it's bound to happen. Now, I'm, I'm bringing, Pastor, I'm this bringing this an antecedent. This has nothing to do with MPP. No, no I, I did, I, I, you have and your Honorable time. Honorable let him make his point. Yeah, now, I'm just narrating the antecedents. Then... Um, between 2009 up to 2010, mm -hmm. 2011, mm -hmm. we saw the response that was very emphatic. That was a personal position that President Mills took yes, on the Yes, and then let me help you. He and said, was I as president will never initiate or support any attempt to legalize yes, homosexuality and, and, in Ghana. And, yeah. that, and that comment, that was a, pers a personal position, as I have always from the beginning stated my personal position on this subject, was highly commended. And then uh, the President Mahama 
was also confronted with similar pressures. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that you recall the president in any visuals uh, responding to any interview or any press conference responding clearly to this? I, re I recall very well um, the minister, then the minister of information, then Honorable Muhammad Yarga was mostly the one that was explaining, attempting what, to what state are you talking about? The, the, this is so clear. Now, 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 let's again, listen to what President Mahama said. No, no, he I, said I will he make told... reference to that. I will okay, make reference I'm listening. To that. But, no, but you're, you're talking I'm, like they I'm didn't really building, is it, if, comment if, on the issue as it is. They said no. no I mean, one may not have to misconstrue the point that I'm making. When it comes to homosexuality issue, it is, it is not a political issue. It is. It is even more. More. It is. It is more. It is multifaceted. It is a, a, an issue that, as a collective, we are all are concerned about. It is the position of Ghana as a society. It is our customs. It is our beliefs. It is a matter of what we have determined to be right so and team, what we have determined to be wrong and abomination. When you heard so, our president saying it's bound but what, to happen, but I'm, did you I'm still building a point to, I'm building a point to this. To the, to 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 the the fact that. I'm just giving you a, a landscape and, and, and um, antecedent of how various presidents had responded and to single out that President Mills emphatically stated his personal positions. All other presidents did not emphatically state their personal positions. However, they resisted any attempt of the introduction of homosexuality into our legislation. And that is the point that I must state. Now, we've had a legal luminary and, and a, a venerable you know, um, human rights um, expert in the person of Justice Emil Schott, who has commented that looking at the response, analyzing the response given by President Mills mm -hmm. and the response given by President Akufuado, they are, they are basically talking about the same thing. There is no difference between President Muhammad's response given and President Akufuado's Response really? given, and that is President Mahama. Let me quote. And, and, he said, he, he said this, I think, no, at the yeah, uh, you I, know, I remember very well. Parliament is Scottish. Let me, Ghana let me let is made up my of, country is, is a secular of, yes. one made up of Christians, mm -hmm. Muslims, and traditional beliefs. None of these sects uh, accept gayism and lesbianism. And as a leader, once the people I rule uphold this, then I cannot accept these cultures of the grounds of uh, human rights. Despite our challenges, our nation stands paramount against any other foreign aid. Yes. Yes. And how different is that from President Okufuado's assertion? It's bound Ghana to happen. Is, is, I cannot Ghana do this. Made up My of people Muslims. don't want it. You see, I, I, I appreciate the concern that has been, you know, eminently, you know, being raised by assertions of the public on that particular phrase. And, and I appreciate the concern that is expressed by them. And that is where the tendencies for it to be misconstrued as a position for homosexuality is unfortunate and must be debunked. And look, I, I, have, I, have, I keep saying that I am, I am the leading advocate, so long as Parliament is concerned, when it comes to the issues of anti-homosexual and, and LGBT issues are concerned. I know the people, the eminent people who are in support of my campaign. I know the eminent people whose principles and personal positions strongly corroborate the advocacy that I've been raising. And I'm to, I'm to let you know that the president is not in any way going to give room for legalization of homosexuality in Ghana. Now, principally, uh, let uh, me, uh, let uh, me, uh, let's, team, let's, let's come so to... you will agree with me that Ghana's uh, conservative society has seen the gay community uh, mostly silent and in hiding. Some feel that with this uh, comment, uh, the president has set a ground uh, for, to open a flood, the floodgates for, uh, you know, such people to, to come out. Couldn't this uh, be the case? No, that is not the case. I do not share that opinion. And as a, Ghana is a sovereign country, and sovereignty lies with the people. Mm. And as a people, in Article 1 of the Constitution, sovereignty lies with the people. It is the determination of the people to make laws, to Should even decide to to even decide what they want and what laws they find acceptable. Mm. In Article 39 of the Constitution, under the Directive Principles of State Policy, it is enshrined that we would only allow as a society such practices that are in line with our customs, with our beliefs, with, with our traditional values. Those practices are the ones that will be accepted into the fabric of national this life. This is what the Association now, of Gay and Lesbianism in Ghana, this is what they say. 
Uh, they had to say in a statement issued uh, consistent with our claim um, demeanor, there will be a peaceful movement walk on Friday, 15th of December 2017, from Abrath Sports to the Flagstaff House to thank the president, Nanadu Danko Akufado, and his government and uh, present their mission and vision of the LGP. Uh, BTQI. Yeah. Just well, just before I even land, yeah. just before I even land, just before I even land on on the constitution. Let me. Let, let him land. Yeah. Let him land. Oh. Let him land quickly. Is he quickly. taking all the time? No, he's not. Let so him land he's quickly. taking about three times the time that I have used. You have your turn, you sir. Okay. You have your turn. Finish it. Yeah. Fundamentally, the article chapter four of the, of the constitution of Ghana, article eleven, states that the laws of Ghana shall comprise. Hey, the constitution, and then it goes on to mention enactment, other rules and regulations, the existing law, and E, the common law. And here, the clause 2 of the constitution, Article 11, further explains that the common law of Ghana shall comprise the rules of law generally known as the common law, rules generally known as the doctrines of equity, and rules of customary law. Now, the customary law in the, um, the, in the clause 2, clause 3, of the constitution states that for the purposes of this article customary law means the rules of law which by custom are applicable to communities in ghana and i'm just opposing that with the provision of section 104 of chapter 6 of the criminal code which proscribes a natural canal knowledge so in any way that you look at it legally customarily homosexuality lesbianism bestiality are unlawful under our laws, and it, there's no part of Ghana from the north They've to the south. They've issued a press east statement. To, and I'll respond to that just yeah. briefly before I, I land. There's nowhere in our society within the four walls of Ghana where a people will gather to contract marriage between people of the same sex. It is it is abomination, and it is so remains in our constitution, and it so remains in our laws. Some of us, some of us are are are, are, are bold enough to come out clearly to lead this fight and to resist any temptation of such introduction. Uh, now, Honorable, the people in. that are claiming to Thank be, to be um, the, the, the gay people, see, let us be... Oh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll respond to that when you, you when see, you that. Why do you think the Association of Gays and Lesbians are embarking on a they peaceful are bold walk to today? come out, right. Why have they been emboldened today? Mm. It's because the number one person in this land has given them the leeway. He has given them a cue that there hasn't been enough pressure and all that. That is why it is happening today. Why didn't it happen yesterday? Why didn't it happen a month or a year ago? It's because today the person who matters the most is saying that there hasn't been enough pressures and that it is bound to happen. Mm -hmm. You see, nobody should even dare to compare the response of President Ekufuado to any of the past presidents we've had, President Mills, President Mahama, President Kufo. You cannot compare these responses. It is just uncomparable. Because, you see, if you try to do that, you are not being honest. Pastor Reverend is someone I have a lot of respect for because, you see, for him to become a parliamentarian, mainstream politician, he is going to help us prove a point that you can be a good Christian and a good politician. So my advice to him is that if it is wrong, he should be bold and say it is wrong, as it is. He even started this campaign way before the president made this statement. So I believe that this is an opportunity for him to up his campaign mm -hmm. against gays and lesbians. So he should be bold to condemn that statement. The sermon he was preaching here, all of us here are already converted souls. The person who needs this most is the president. So he should get an opportunity and read the scripture and that aspect of the constitution to the president of this country. Because otherwise, I mean, where he's leading us is going to be dangerous. And he's derailing all the efforts that he has been doing. The speaker of parliament was emphatic that it is not going to happen. I, I heard him and all that. And you see, the president doesn't believe that. The president doesn't believe what the speaker is saying. The president doesn't believe the course that he is, is, is charting. So it is a very simple thing for all of us to do today. You see, I am hoping that we are wrong. 
and that all those explaining the president's position that that is not what he meant are right. Mm. That is my prayer. But it, 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 so, so should should the president come out again to say that that will help all of us. This is what I mean. I this mean, is what I I, mean. I am strongly Intent, against what, what's your this. what's your take on it? Do you think the president should come out to say that this is it? That this is what I'm saying? I mean, the the president is a listening president. He's a man that responds to people's voices, and I would not be surprised that he would he would find it necessary to assert his personal position more clearly on this if that is what the public demands and if that is what is going to ensure that our collective resistance um, to resisting any such introduction of those virtues that uh, uh, um, if that is what is going to help the collective resistance that we are offering against the legitimization pressures of homosexuality in our society i believe that may be done but it is important to point out the fact that when it comes to the issue of homosexuality uh, it is uh, I, 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 just like any other issue, I even avoid the tendencies of roping in political sentiment into my discussions. And I try as much as possible to be very objective in all my analysis because I believe that in politics, just as in other um, endeavors, credibility is key and credibility is very important. Now, the, the, the sources that I've been quoted as uh, pur purporting to be the association of gays and then purporting to initiate uh, actions to the Flagstaff House. One may have to be careful to even check where it is coming from, if it is really because... It, uh, one, 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 are you saying I've that following, they are I've not following, the right people? I've been, no, I've been following discussions ensuing uh, um, with this homosexual debate and, and I see elements of some people trying to court political sympathies, trying to uh, court some uh, use this as a, a, an opportunity to the uh, political manipulation, and that is a hypocrisy. And you, you know why? When I began this, when I began Reverend, this, are you alleging that they yes, have the minorities it. behind and I'm it? Premising, I'm premising, I'm, I'm premising. I'm there are a whole lot of hosts website now, you know, come springing up in the name of homosexuality, non-existent websites that uh, known and uh, NDC stalwarts are behind just to create artificial pressures from from gay to score political advantage from this, and those tendencies must be condemned. Here again, I'm premising my facts on the, on, on, on the, on the uh, this claim, on the fact that when I began the um, crusade against homosexuality and advocacy to resist any pressure um, against the introduction of, of LGBT in our legislation, how many NDC MPs corroborated? Was, was there a single NDC MP who corroborated the position? They were contrary to the expectation that they would have even come on board openly to also state their position and to corroborate the position that I was drumming home. Some of them openly on other platforms on TV, openly, you know, debated against the position I had taken. They openly debated against the... Wait, which people? The, 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 yes, it's which on people? record. I mean, who? It is on record. And I, 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 mean, I have, I have all this recorded tapes on TV. Who... They openly recorded. You see, they openly debated that against... That they were against the, fighting, uh, for instance, against... I, 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 launched, I launched this on Metro that. TV. Welcome back. You are still watching The Hard Truth, Honorable um, uh, Thomas Nyako Ampem, MP for a Sujaman constituency. Honorable Reverend uh, Intim Fojo, MT, M, uh, MP for Ascent South constituency uh, in our studio. Um, 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 Honourable, um, the constituency, or oh, constitution, sorry, speaks um, silently on homosexuality, arguments on its illegality, system forms, chapter of, I think, chapter six uh, of the criminal code in our constitution, Act 60, you know, recommended or amended by the Com uh, Cr Criminal Code Act uh, 2003, which cautions against unnatural canal knowledge. But this is not enough. Do you think that um, it's time or the time is ripe for us to draft uh, specific uh, laws that explicitly, explicitly, you know, explain what it is by homosexuality? Exactly so, because, you see, when the Constitution was being promulgated, this incident was not topical. It wasn't something that uh, probably they anticipated. And so... That is why the Constitution seems to be a bit silent on it. But today, it is a major issue. 
And so if there is any opportunity to amend our constitution, mm -hmm. I think that will be the right time for us to uh, in, include new events, new trend of things that we believe that we need to be emphatic on. Uh, having said that, I, I want to say that, you see, I don't want us to politicize this issue. Uh, nobody stands to gain from this because, you see, it is something that will affect society, our country as a whole. And so if the president has said something and it is not right, let us be bold and point out to it. I want to dare the president that if the pressure is enough and then he feels like bringing a bill to parliament, he should try it. And I believe that that will be the first time that he will realize that even his own MPP MPs will not be in support. I, I want to be sure, very emphatic, that if any bill of this nature is brought to the floor of parliament, MPP MPs, NDC, Everybody will but be what, what would you say? People, people it, say that we are being too emotional, we are being too Christian and, and, and too, see, too Ghanaian, we and, and we, we, we don't want to embrace it is westernization. We it is something we abhor. It is something we detest. It is something that we don't want to think about. You see? And so that is why it is surprising that anybody of that caliber will take a very soft stand and say that, Oh, I mean, once the pressures are mounted and it's enough, it is bound, uh, to, it happen. Is bound to happen. But, but really, the Speaker of Parliament has stated emphatically uh, uh, that on several occasions that homosexuality has no place in the Ghanaian society. If the Speaker and many others, you know, share this view, uh, why is it become, uh, you know, difficult for for Parliament to do that? Yeah, fundamentally, um, reference to Article Eleven, which I just read. Customary law is part of the law of Ghana, mm. and what are, what is accepted as customs, what is accepted as the tradition of the people in Ghana, form very important part of our law. The constitution is the supreme law of the land, and so any norm, any custom that is accepted by a people in Ghana is as eminent as any provision expressly stated in the constitution. With the criminal code, um, the section. 104 chapter 6 of the criminal code i argue the point that all the debates on homosexuality the legality or illegitimacy thereof is anchored on that single provision of unnatural canal knowledge the moment that string is tampered with it utterly removes the uh, the whole legitimacy of that debate that we are holding and i am of the view that if it's even possible we should further strengthen that screws we should screw it up tighter in a way that will even offer more clarity. And those who may have argued that that provision even in itself presents some ambiguities will, 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 will be very clear in their minds. But, but going, but in, in going team, forward... Apart from your advocacy against the legalization of LGBT, or is that, well, yeah, uh, what have you done in your personal capacity as an MP to mobilize your colleagues to make sure the House takes up the matter. And that is the point that I was just going to make, that I began this advocacy and I did, I did not do it in seclusion. I did this in Parliament. I launched a press conference in Parliament. This triggered a nationwide debate. This triggered, if you recall, it triggered a nationwide debate that lasted for weeks. Did you hear any single NDC MP even commenting in support of this? Did you hear any single uh, um, 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 a member of parliament on the on the minority, you know, even commenting to com co uh, corroborate the position that I have taken. Why is that, that was happening? not done. So if suddenly people take a U turn to want to take a position that uh, suddenly now they are taking, even when it's evidenced on record, uh, as, and some NDC MPs having openly debated me live against my position, but, and but now don't you seek think to it was cast, because they, yes. they felt. We so, don't so need that. So that's the hypocrisy you don't, you don't, you don't be encouraged. You know, and that's a question you must interrogate. is trying to say that because Nobody we supported. did not so, come out to support his cause, we kind of uh, support gays or lesbians. No, that's himself. not the point that I'm I making. Mean, that, is, that is a no, very no, unfortunate that, that is not the point that I'm see, making. I heard in the news, I heard, uh, I mean, in the news, something that he has started. Yes, it's commendable. I didn't go to support him, but he's also not come to me to ask for my support for anything. You see, if you wanted my support, you would have come to me. 
that doesn't mean I don't see what you are doing as a good thing. So if you say because we didn't come to support your cause, we cannot speak against this statement but, by the but commander But was he in chief. really supposed to come to you and say, <laughs> That's a posture. support me? Well, it was on the so floor of parliament. Why has he has, has started is, is a, it because, a good cause? Is it because the Does president, it mean because hold on. we did not it, go to support him? What the president has said, we shouldn't condemn it. Is that what, what he's trying no, to say? No, but he started the conversation. He started so it. why yes, are you interested now? Mm. You see, for me, I didn't even think that the gays and uh, lesbian thing was a serious thing in this country. I didn't think it was a serious thing. Okay. So yes, you started a course. It's commendable. We will never condemn it. Mm. It's a very commendable thing. But because we did not come to support your course, the commander-in-chief, the number one of this country, says that no, it is bound to happen <laughs> and you are having problems with us condemning that statement just on the grounds that you started a good cause and we didn't con uh, uh, support you. You are missing you. the point. You see, that is exactly what you are saying. Yeah, that we, are, we have made a U-turn and we are condemning the president. After that is very unfortunate. My position. Nobody has openly <laughs> debated you for fighting openly. against I told you, I've given you all the then names. Then say it. I've given you all the names. Then say it. I told you. If you have said, then say <laughs> it. I've given you all the names. If you say yes. any NDC MP has been working <laughs> against your cause <laughs> to fight against gays and lesbians in this country, be bold and say it. I have said it to you. Nobody, say it. I have said Don't it say to it to me. Say it. No. Yeah. You, the you fact that you have said it, I have said it to you. If it's on both of record you. already. No, both of if you, you I have said it to you. If it's on record already. No, no, tell me why can't you tell, tell, tell the whole of Ghana? If it is true, if you are bold, say it in camera. I have said it to both of you. If you are bold, accuse the honorable member in camera that he has spoken against your cause. Then we'll take it from from there, but don't hide it that you no. whisper something to my ears no. and then you have told have me. Told you me. haven't told me anything. Okay. So you see, you so you see, the <laughs> fact that you are embarking on a course to fight against gays and lesbianism in, in this country does not mean that if the president is supporting gays and lesbians mm -hmm. in this country, that's, we shouldn't speak that's, against that's, it. See, you see, so don't tell us that we are making a new person who said that. You see, we shouldn't do politics. Let's that move is what on. we are doing. And you look said the, minority on, and gentlemen. MPs are, are making U10 and that we didn't support your call. It's an unfortunate statement. Nobody is making a youth and nobody, no single member on the minority side has supported <laughs> gays and lesbians in this country. I want to place that on record, that it has never happened and it will never happen. And so if the president goofs and says that it is bound to happen if they mount pressure, you see, maybe the president is testing the waters. That is what I see. It is something he wants to do. He wants to test the waters. And so what I will call on Ghanaians for us to do now is to mount enough pressure on the president for him to know that we detest it. And so he shouldn't dare. But, but what's on this? It, it, it's that, our president trying to be in the good books of the international of somebody, community. I mean, of somebody, can, yes, can we somebody assume? is mounting pressure on him. What, what would and you so say he wants to that? To paint that picture what would you that, say? oh, if the pressures come, no, we haven't done it because to. there hasn't been enough pressures. Uh, if the pressure is mounted and it's in, enough, it is bound to happen. He is just singing the tune of somebody. Somebody is playing the tune and he's dancing to it. In, in the spirit of, you know, ensuring that all as a collective come on board on this collective and collaborative resistance against any pressure that will seek to introduce LGBT elements in Ghana. It, is, it will be most unfortunate that we will lose this fight mm. on divided front. So now I want critical. to support your cause. I want it to is, place and I'm, I'm anything most you want to do, call me. Most because now I see that we need to I am uh, actually most support this to. cause. Because if most even grateful. the president himself but I'm doesn't asking see anything wrong the, with it, then we the need to join Is the president trying to get Abusia. favors from the international Abusia. community? I mean, specifically, yeah, please answer that. Let me put it on record mm. that I have kept very silent and admiring the the submissions that have been espoused by my honorable colleague not because i agree with every shred of 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 uh, submission he has made i disagree with 80 percent of what he has said but i respect the viewers let 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 me make my point you have the chance to make yours you see when the the, the insistent you know attacks on the president singling out certain disjointed phrases in the response that he gave and completely taking it out of context and continually ha hammering there goes to to firm up the point that I made earlier on that unless some group of people may want to seek 
some political sympathies as a result of this fight that collectively we are all putting up, then we may refrain from this. And as a, as a member of parliament, my colleague does know very well that the president cannot make a single change in our laws. Every change that is to, be, to take place in our laws has to go through the legislative procedure. And of all the 275 members of parliament that we have, in the constitution again, it states that sovereignty, sovereignty lies with the people. So there is no single member of parliament who on his own accord can espouse any view contrary to the collective position taken by his constituents on the subject of homosexuality. And here, every constituency has unanimously agreed that this is a board and we will not allow that. So it will not find space in our legislation. In any case, in any case, if there will be any attempt, and that is assurance that I want to give to the public, if there will be any attempt to even go through any procedure and should any member of parliament, which I believe so well, would not support this. If we find expression in our legislation, we recall what occurred with attempted introduction of the, of the toll levy, for instance. This was a policy that had been enacted in the sixth parliament, in the NDC administration. This was a policy that was enacted in the sixth parliament, but became, uh, came to a point for that stakeholders attempted to introduce that. Then the public realized that this enactment had gone on our blind side, albeit it is not in congruence with our position and our interests. Calls were made. Immediately that, that um, policy was revoked. And that is a sign to tell every legislator that if we, all, we fail to join up this advocacy to resist any legislation and in any unlikely event, in any unlikely event that any tampering is done to our laws in favor of homosexuality, the people of Ghana will not take it kindly. And again, and to assure the public that the president, again, cannot repeal any portion of the law without par parliamentary approval. Everything goes through a procedure. So, is it, if, if um, that my colleague here, my good friend, Honorable Ampim, made a point that perhaps I should have walked to him. I shall probably walk to every member of parliament to state the advocacy. That would not have been out of place. But equally, when, that, when the campaign you know, went viral, there were sections of the stakeholders, the clergy, Muslim clerics, traditional leaders, and, and Ghanaian sections of the public who took to the media, who added their voice, who stated clearly their position. I didn't walk up to any of them. I didn't want, go to personally solicit their support, but they recognized that this is an important position as a country. See, when it comes to the issue of LGBT, it is a, an issue of advocacy, and the strongest voice wins. So we all will have to put politics aside, and that's my humble appeal. Let us put political differences aside and unite on this fight and ensure that we protect the custom of the land, we protect the good laws of the land, so the glory of the Lord and, 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 and that peace that we enjoy that, that has been sustained over the years will continue to sustain. I see. Because there we'll are right a lot of ramifications. Welcome back, uh, Honorable Thomas Nyakun Ampem, uh, MP, Sujaman Constituency, Honorable Reverend John Intim Fodjo, MP, for Asen South Constituency, in our studio. Um, um, Honorable, the Bupen Yapi Bridges, you know, were closed uh, to passengers or vehicular users for all in the name of maintenance. Um, in 2017, I think somewhere in August uh, this year, um, the ministry said we're going to do um, some maintenance on the bridge and they suggested um, some route, alternative uh, routes to, to be used. What's happening to that? Yeah, in fact, um, it's so unfortunate mm. if you look because at Because I'm um, asking that this because there are hundreds of, uh, of passengers stranded on, on, that, on that route every day. And a lot of uh, perishable mm. uh, foods mm. going waste and a lot of inconveniences too. Uh, all those who uh, who use that route and it's so unfortunate that comes to uh, bring to bear the fact that our maintenance culture in this country is so appalling uh, because we are told that the bridge was constructed uh, almost 50 years, 50, 50 years ago and I expect that there have been periodic maintenance but if it was done well we shouldn't get to this point, this unfortunate mm. incident. 
Um, the Minister for Roads and Highways was in Parliament today to brief the House on what is happening. And it is unfortunate. The Minister said that uh, in March this year, they spent about a million cities to uh, do repair works on, on the bridge. And so the question I ask is that just March this year, you do maintenance on, on the bridge, and then in November, we have to close down the bridge. Uh, he actually brought pictures of, of the uh, bridge, the present condition, and showed to us in Parliament, and then said he visited the place um, on the 21st, and then 22nd, uh, within 24 hours, ordered uh, the closure of, of the bridge. Mm. And the issue is that there wasn't enough consultation. Nobody knew about it because of the state of the bridge. He had to quickly ask that. But the, the bridge engineers be... are saying that uh, you know the bridges are so weak and it it, it can collapse uh, at any point in time. It is better but, we close but... it than to allow any catastrophic event to happen. I agree. But my point is that we shouldn't sit down for this uh, to happen. We shouldn't sit for it to get. The bridges to have been road. there for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your party was there eight mm -hmm. years ago. And we didn't see any maintenance, uh, you know, when, when it got You see, that is why I say that, Isn't our, that part our, of the problem? our maintenance culture in this country is something that we need to look at. I mean, yes, we were in power for eight years before. Uh, January this year that this mm -hmm. new government took to power. I want to believe that there were routine maintainers. Uh, but if it has gotten to this stage, you recall Adomi Bridge, mm -hmm. I, I was then a DC uh, in a soldier man. Adomi Bridge faced a similar challenge and we had to look for money and then and then uh, repair the Adomi Bridge and even up the capacity of, of the Adomi Bridge. So that is what we need to do for almost all our bridges and our roads. We don't have to sit down for it to get to this position. But you see, my point is that um, if you did maintenance in March, what kind of maintenance was done? Uh, did you do in March that between March and November, it has to deteriorate up to this level? Uh, so what kind of maintenance were we doing But if you had also started eight years ago, I mean, uh, we could have been in a better shape now. But in team, the two If we had started up, eight years doing mm, what? Building a new bridge? Or maintaining the, see, it. According to the, according it. To the, the, Engineers, uh, the minister, minister. Mm. they do quarterly inspection of these bridges. So you do quarterly inspections. And I expect that these quarterly inspections were done throughout, when, uh, for the eight-year period that we were in office. And so we expect that some of these things should be done well. And, and so the engineers, if you, they are doing quarterly uh, inspection of the bridge, they should be able to give reports, and then based on the reports, certain actions must be taken. So my point is that I don't know exactly what was done, uh, the, the nature of the quarterly inspections that happened during our time in office, and the kind of maintenance we did during our time in office. The information I have now is based on what the minister brought to us in parliament. Mm. That one million cities was spent on the bridge in March. You don't believe one million cities was spent, do you, from what you, you say? You see, I, I don't know. I don't know the extent of work that was done and the extent of work that had to be done. But the information he's given us is that one million was spent in March this year. Mm. So is it that the engineers could not anticipate that after this work, a lot more had to be done for us to wait for the minister to visit the place 21st and order closure within 24 hours without giving enough information to the general public? People travel all the way, get there, and they cannot cross. That is my problem. Mm. You see, that if, yes, it has to be done, it has to be done. But right. there has to be uh, consultation. Uh, uh, Alaji Suini stated that he's the MP for the area. Uh, how do no, we call Jinapo. it? Jinapo. He, the two bridges are in his constituency. Mm -hmm. You were going to close down the bridge. He says all the chiefs he's spoken to, chiefs are calling him. Nobody was aware. He, the MP, was not aware. So the consultation, they said but, they but did. But do you think, Who did they consult? Right. Did government plan well for this? Because we have two bridges linking from the north to the south, and, and many people have economic activities on it. Did the government plan for this? In respect of the closure of the Yapebupe bridge to ensure that 
proper work is done to put it in the shape mm. that will transform it from the current hazardous and, and, and the dead trap that it is into being a more trouble uh, um, transportation facility, mm. it is commendable. Um, I maintain the view that we do not always have to wait till a disaster occurs before certain very decisive actions are taken. I regret the, and I share the, the sympathies of the people that are affected. Um, of, of course, if the exigencies of the situation had not been on an emergency basis and, and it had been such that ample time would have been permitted for consultations to be done, for information to go, for such engagement to go through, it would not have been out of place. But let us give recourse to the condition of emergency that necessitated this. I would have personally blamed the Minister of Roads and Highways if he had been negligent. He had been negligent upon the visit of the facility not to have ordered the immediate close down, closure of, of the bridge to initiate proper maintenance on this. And let us all uh, refrain from even trying to apportion political blames to what ought to be done and what not ought to be done. But let us also be fair to appreciate that the technocrats who sit at the Ministry of Roads and Transport at Ghana Highways Authority have been doing properly their routine checks, their quarterly uh, routines have been done. And, and it's on record. you know that I earlier this to, year, no, you I'll, know, I'll, I'll uh, run, these the same point. bridges, hold on, these same bridges were closed uh, to traffic <laughs> for uh, same maintenance to be done. Looking at the state of, you know, at that time, couldn't this or couldn't the government have used uh, that period to, you know, at least uh, repair the alternative routes they suggested? Let, let, me, let me make that point here. That, uh, because I was truncated at the point. I'm listening. That quarterly, let us be very fair to them, that they have been given their reports. Let's, I was listening to the, min, uh, the Deputy Minister of uh, Rules and Transport, Honorable Cabo, and he was recounting the records that, that show, the recommendations that were made, that this is a 50-year-old bridge, mm -hmm. and the scheduled m m periods were major renovations to the level that Honorable Nyakwampim made reference to in the Adomi Bridge where it was, it was a, 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 a comprehensive you know, maintenance, a revamping that had to be done, which was scheduled, and the period I've forgotten specifically, but it falls between the, the last five years and the last three years, that it, they were due to be done. It wasn't done. So if, if, if further deteriorations had accumulated to a point, and upon that detection, which, which may or much, the, there was there was some maintenance that was done. Let us remember that that may not have been sufficient to fully correct the defects that has accumulated over the years. But we appreciate but, that. What so, of your alternative so, routes you gave? Couldn't so, you have done something now, about there, it? There are, there are there are challenges. Like I said, this was a decision that was taken on an emergency basis, and I will support the minister for taking that decision to save lives. Because even a single life, if we had lost a single life on that bridge. On, 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 on negligence, it would have been very, a, a very serious situation. If you want to so save life, you will that... fix the road that connects from Techiman to Wenchi to Bamboy to Wa. You, you I mean, uh, let me what, what are you, you talking about? Let me, let me submit the to you. The roads are horrible. Let me submit to you. The alternative roads are just horrible. Yeah, let, me, let me submit to you that alternative roads are horrible. There are other attempts to make um, alternative provisions to ferry people on other routes. All those arrangements are being done. This issue has found notable expression in cabinet discussions. And cabinet is taking some very urgent and, and immediate you know, steps to ensure that alternative measures are put in place to ease transportation in and around the area. And so I humbly share with the, in the sentiment of the affected you know, users of, of the route and the inconveniences that within this period they are going through. That I share with them. But we do also appreciate that this would have is a better decision and a better position than to have allowed it like it had been allowed over the years. And if in un, any unlikely event, this bridge had collapsed. Now the, 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 uh, and I also think that the members of parliament in those areas, in, in my case, for instance, there is a particular bridge in my constituency that is problematic. And for that reason, taking cognizance of the hazardous nature of that particular bridge, there is, there is always insistent calls on the Ministry of, of, um, of, of uh, Roads and Highways. There is always that engagement with the, the regional director of Roads and Highways 
my close collaboration between myself and my, my because I'm in Accra on most weekdays, with the DC to ensure that periodically the engineers at assembly keep checking the health of the bridge once we are putting in agenda and registering that this has to be fixed. But, but, but if, if, right. if, if that but engagement... Again, gentlemen, doesn't it, you know, raise a concern why as a country we only have one major road that connects, you know, the north to the south? That's doesn't it concern. raise that major concern? That, that, that is why the Eastern <laughs> Corridor Road is under construction. And that is why the current administration need to quickly review all the contracts and things that they said they are reviewing and get the contractors back on site. You recall that this current government asked most of the contractors to stop work and uh, for them to do some investigations and all that. It's been uh, 10, 11 months. We expect that they will quickly conclude any investigations that they are doing and get the contractors back to site or reaward the contract or whatever. All we want to see is that work must progress on those roads. Uh, that is, I hear, is even the shortest route to the north. And so it is very, very important that those roads, alternative routes, are, are, are constructed. Mm. Uh, once that is done, it will even ease the pressure on some of these bridges. Uh, let me also say that Finally, quickly, time is uh, um, mm. it is good that the minister has taken this action uh, to prevent any incident that may have happened because uh, that would have been more disastrous. But you see, what we are saying is that going forward, we need to be proactive. And if you want to take some of these actions, consult, get the people involved, the MP for the area, the chiefs, all the people in the known of this have a lot of announcements made so that people are not stranded. People don't travel, get to the bridge, mm -hmm. only to realize that they cannot cross okay. because that, that is unacceptable. And so going forward, we need to be proactive in some of these things. And as a country, we need to ensure that we, we uh, do better in, in terms of maintenance. Because, you see, uh, we are always eager to do more things, new things. Oh, I am the one who started this. I am the one who did that. And that is what is killing us as a country. And so we don't want to maintain existing structures, existing infrastructure, because once you do it, the credit still goes to the person who initiated it. And so as a country, we need to begin to change some of these things because it will not help us. It will not help Reverend. us at all as a country. Yeah, the, the, the point that Honorable Nyakwampi has landed on is a very important one, that we have to keep committing to the maintenance of infrastructure that is already put in place by the, the, the predecessors. And that is exactly what the action the road ministers took in May and subsequently in November 20th, ordered the closure for maintenance. But is this, this, this happening in Bope and the challenge that is being faced in their transportation, we should draw a lot of lessons. Uh, 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 60 years down the line, Ghana should have, uh, should have had a more robust road and transportation network. And I'm glad that when the, the, the uh, expenditure of state resources are targeted at infrastructure, we must begin to see a commensurate, you know, physical value of that investment. Last year, seven billion dollars, seven billion Ghana cities, was purported to have been invested into infrastructure. Uh, here, I think I would also want to commend um, the President Akufuado uh, with a plan in place to ensure that the railway line is extended all the way from the south to the north. At, at, with the coming into being of that uh, the railway line, we, we are going to have alternative routes that is going to, whilst we see to the completion of the Eastern Corridor, and any such other road networks that will have to be open, additional ones that will ease transportation and would even ensure that in such cases of emergency or exigencies, there are alternatives that can easily be uh, resorted to to ease the inconvenience. Was well, Reverend certainly trying to much, suggest gentlemen. that he did not see a lot of infrastructure in this country <laughs> last no, year I, and I, the I, years before. Point, well, Thank see, you very much, gentlemen, for I, I was trying not to go there. You see, for this whole point, year, 
Nothing has happened. My point was nothing has happened in terms of infrastructure. If you go to my constituency, for instance, there is not even a single project that is ongoing in the constituency. I see. Nothing is happening in terms of infrastructure. Honorable MP for Isujaman constituency, Honorable Reverend Intim Fodre, MP for Asin South constituency. Thank you, gentlemen, for for coming to heart. You've been watching the hard truth. But Mr. President, you went to Al Jazeera. I invite you on the hard truth next time. I I pray that will be soon. But what are your comments on on the president's statement? What what are your, what do you think? What are your stance on it? Um, send your comments to our social media platforms on your screens right now, and uh, we'll be happy to to, to know what you, you you think and what, what your stance are. My name is Nana Akosia Kunedua Sante Samuel. So I can catch a repeat of the program tomorrow morning. It's at nine to ten a.m. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Bye.